Hello, people of the internet. My name is Johnny, and welcome to what is going to be a very exciting week. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a whole bunch of FNAF movie news. Tomorrow, we got some more just regular FNAF news to talk about. And if you remember a couple of videos ago, we took a look at that leaked Security Breach TV teaser, which, I mean, April 6th is coming up, and that was a date that was on the website, so probably gonna get some ruined news later in the week, too. So just a whole bunch of stuff happening this week. And then somehow, I also got to find the time to make a video on that brand new Pop Goes game that came out, which we're gonna talk a bit more about in tomorrow's video. But like I said at the start, today's video is all about news regarding the upcoming FNAF movie, because believe it or not, it actually actually finished filming yesterday. And with that, let's just hop right into the news. If you're brand new, don't forget to scroll down and give that sub button a little tickle. And yes, yesterday was the last day of filming for the FNAF movie. Today, we got actress Kat Connor Sterling, who has been cast as Max in the film, posting a few behind the scenes images in celebration for filming finally concluding. And then we also had Matthew Lillard himself, William Afton in the FNAF movie, posting to his Instagram, not only with his signature quote of I always come back, but also with hashtag finish strong confirming he's also now done shooting all his scenes for the film. And since filming has now concluded, now they're going to be moving on to post-production, editing, VFX, a whole bunch of stuff involving marketing like posters and teasers and trailers. Post-production is a very long process. It'll most likely take several months, but if there are any brand new updates, I'll be sure to let you know. As for new cast members, we've got Ryan Reinecke cast as Freddy Security Guard, which is pretty interesting. As I'm sure we we all are aware at this point we got Mike Schmidt being played by Josh Hutcherson, who is going to be the main night guard at Freddy's. However, Ryan's role is still very interesting. A lot of people are speculating he could be the night guard before Mike takes the job at Freddy's, and kind of in a similar fashion to the Scream franchise, if you've seen those movies, he's going to be the opening kill during the film. That would be absolutely phenomenal to kick off the movie with. Some people are also thinking if he is the night guard before Mike, he could also be the phone guy. I know a a lot of people would love to see Scott Cawthon reprise his role in the film if Phone Guy does make an appearance, but right now that's just not confirmed. But yeah, I'd love to know what are your thoughts on this brand new Freddy security guard character. How do you think they're going to implement him in the film? Earlier today, we also got the word that Aaron McCluskey has been cast as an 80s newscaster in the film. This has led a lot of fans to speculate that the missing children's incident is going to be happening in the film, and when the news breaks that kids are going missing at Freddy's, obviously the news station's going to be picking up on that. And then of course, that leads to Aaron's character of the newscaster reporting on the story. Moving on now from cast announcements to brand new crew announcements. We got the announcement that BAFTA winning composer Jason Graves has officially joined the crew. And just to name off a few titles you might recognize that Jason has worked on for the score, you got Dead Space, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Assassin's Creed Friday the 13th, Tomb Raider. This guy has basically done freaking everything. And speaking of people who have done basically everything, Tyler Bates has also signed on to compose the score for the film, uh, seemingly replacing Michael Whalen, by the way, who we talked about last time who was doing the, uh, who was composing the score. But like I said, Bates has also worked on an incredible amount of films. John Wick Chapter 4, which had an absolutely insane score, went dummy hard. Pearl, as well as X, just to stay on topic of horror films, he's also worked on Guardians of the Galaxy, like, Dude's a freaking legend. For more crew announcements, we've got Lin Moncrief, who has signed on to be the movie's cinematographer. Most recently, he worked on Blumhouse's absolutely smash hit Megan, Vengeance as well, The Wind, which, fun fact, was a film that actually Emma Tammy was the director of, who is also the director of the FNAF movie, so they've got some chemistry already. Composer Bruce Babcock has also signed on, providing additional keyboards on Mike Schmidt's theme, which is very interesting. Seems like Mike's gonna be getting his very own theme tune whenever he pops up on the screen, which which is just going to be absolutely fantastic, uh, especially if they remix one of the uh, tunes that he gets in Sister Location. A lot of people have been theorizing they're going to be doing that. That'd be amazing. And lastly, for movie news, you may have seen that Doco, Raz, Ryan, and Baz all posted videos sharing their experience while on the set of uh, the FNAF movie. They weren't able to show off any actual footage of them on the set just yet, but they did drop in little hints here and there about some very exciting news and brand new details regarding the film. One of the big things that caught my attention was that the core four animatronics of Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy all have full-scale robot animatronics made for their characters. However, there are still most likely going to be some people doing some action work in suits of the characters. For some movements that robots just 
can't do, especially most likely when they go around walking around at night. However, the boys did also mention that the robots themselves are very, very full of expressions, which is absolutely amazing to hear. They said they look very accurate to the games, which is also very exciting. The show stage from the FNAF 1 location is also present and looks identical, uh, identical to what it looks like in the FNAF 1 trailer. With all the clouds and the speakers, apparently there's a, a show stage button too, much like from Help Wanted. Apparently the tables and the chairs in the dining room were moved around a little bit for a very specific scene, so something's gonna be going down in the dining hall. Apparently they've also got a prize counter in the pizzeria. Most likely it's gonna be based off the one in Help Wanted and not the prize counter in FNAF 2. Though apparently there are some areas that are just taken right from FNAF 2 and even some of the books, which is pretty weird to think about. I wonder how they're gonna incorporate some of those, how important those locations are gonna be in the in the in the film. Speaking of locations in the FNAF 1 pizzeria, they did confirm a kitchen. We will be seeing a kitchen, which is very exciting news. We haven't properly seen the kitchen besides that one uh, Chica minigame and Help Wanted. We've also got the hallways, the bathrooms, the supply closet where Bonnie goes in, even the parts and service room, which is apparently now right behind the stage. And there are, in fact, little corridors that connect all the rooms in the pizzeria, and apparently, according to Raz, something goes down in that parts and service room. Taking note of a very cool scene that happens in there. Raz also talked about the office quite a bit, confirming the Celebrate post in there. The fan as well has made his debut in the FNAF movie in that office. The computer monitors are all accurate from the first games. Apparently there's also a slight twist with something in the office. We're not entirely sure what that detail is just yet, but it's apparently specifically for the film. Apparently the cameras and the doors in the office are quite important to the plot, being used quite heavily in the film, most likely just because, I mean, let's be honest here, that's the main gameplay of FNAF 1, checking the cameras, closing the doors. Res thankfully mentions the story of the film is very satisfying, specifically saying, obviously it's changed, but it's the same story you know and love, but it has been altered. Also pointing out that Mike and uh, Vanessa's character, being played by Elizabeth Lail, have quite a lot of scenes together, and Mike's uh, character arc is in fact, quite emotional in the film. Sticking with some character descriptions, Raz describes Abby as a lighthearted, vulnerable character and one that will blow us away. Apparently, Vanessa is used very well in the film as well and also has a very strong emotional arc. There's apparently a lot of Easter eggs in the film for us FNAF fans to look out for, so that's gonna be very exciting. The animatronics, going back to them, are very, very tall, accurate to the games, and apparently, Freddy's gonna sing at one point. And finally, for what the boys said about the film, which, by the way, I will leave all four of their videos linked down in the description, they finally mentioned that Blumhouse is planning some reveal for the characters, and by characters, I mean the animatronics, Electronics pretty soon. But that is all of the very exciting brand new details and information regarding the upcoming FNAF movie. Hopefully you all enjoyed. All of this just has me absolutely stoked for the film. I can't wait to see what the animatronics look like. I do wonder when we're going to get that reveal from Blumhouse about the characters. And now that they're actually done filming and post-production is starting up very soon, I wouldn't be shocked if we won't have to wait too much longer for a movie poster or again those reveals of the animatronics. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.